Right off the bat, this comparison has already been made way back when these two were released. That being said, I think that this is still a relevant comparison to make considering how much these two have changed over time in the past about five years. And also a lot has changed in the way that people approach how to use both of these in the last five years. I would say that the 2018 versions of the TR-8S and DigiTact are like skeletons of what they are today. <laughs> I still see tons of people using these classics I'm gonna call them classics, or at least are interested in learning about what they're about. They're still at the forefront, and I think for good reason, because for what they could do, they're priced very, very well, in my opinion. It's a relevant comparison for me to be making as well, because in my collection, these are the instruments, the hardware instruments that I use by far the most. I have a lot to say about these instruments. I've said a lot about these instruments. Prepare yourselves for a thorough rundown here. There is so much information that if you'd like to jump to something specific, there are timestamps in the description of this video, so use those. This is coming from the perspective of someone who loves beats uh, and drums. The majority of my music is beat driven, so obviously you could tell why I like the DigiTact and the TR-8S so much. We won't be going through all of the technical, like basic capabilities of the TR-8S and DigiTact because that's sort of been done and done again here on YouTube in previous videos. What we will be going through is just how each of these fit and what their strengths and weaknesses are today after several updates. We'll be comparing Learning Curve, their sonic quality as drum machines. Yes, there's many people using both of these in different ways outside of being a drum machine, but at their core, these are drum machines. The DigiTact is an eight voice digital drum computer and sampler, and the TR-8S is a rhythm performer. Sequencing, MIDI syncing, sampling, compatibility with other units and software, and most importantly to me, how these have fit, sort of slid themselves into my setup in different ways. And maybe we'll find out which of these is right for you. And I guess you guys will be the ones to decide whether or not these are still relevant today. And this video is sponsored by DistroKid. If you're someone who's independent and wants to release music officially, DistroKid is made for people like us. In my opinion, just the best choice to go with, and we're gonna be getting into reasons why later in this video. There's also affiliate links for both the DigiTact as well as the TR-8S. If you're considering buying either of these new, please do use those links, it helps me so much. I love making content for you guys, but it's not free, so it's just a great way to just give that extra support and keep this train going. So we'll start by comparing learning curve. In terms of basic use, it's pretty easy to guess that the TR-8S has an easier learning curve for sure. I mean, everything is just right here in front of you, right? There's just a lot more surface area. You have your faders for volume. You have your controls right here with these knobs. And then you have your step sequencer. It's very clear. It's a lot easier to just plug things into the sequencer. So like, for example, this kick drum here, I'm just gonna plug them in. There's my kick. I could just throw it in. There it is. Maybe add some snares in here. There's my snappy on the snare. Maybe change the tempo of this as well. Your banks and patterns are also super easy to select. Not to say that they aren't on the DigiTact. So patterns are right here and these are your banks if you hold down on the pattern button. I've given a bunch of lessons on the TR-8S and people just get it right away. The DigiTact to me is also a pretty easy learning curve for an electron instrument. I would even argue that in terms of composition, this is my most fluid instrument altogether. But that's once you understand how it works. <laughs> There's a lot of dual or shift functions to get used to, but in my opinion, they've brought the most important elements to the top of the instrument, super easy to access. Things like selecting samples from your sample pool, so kick, new kick, new kick, new kick, new kick, new kick. <laughs> sample manipulation is also just right there. You got tuning, let's play this pattern. I'm going to solo just the kick. And now I can tune it, change the start length. Can add some bit reduction onto it. Not crazy about that kick, I'm actually going to, that's a better kick. I can hop over to amp and here I have ADSR if I really wanna shorten that kick like crazy. Overdrive. So I have my effects here as well, delay, reverb. Right, so this is pretty quick, panning. So it's all very quick. I have a filter as well. And one definite advantage here with the DigiTact is that the screen is a little bit bigger. It's more descriptive. You don't really get any description with the TR-8S. The 
I guess the other side, the devil's advocate of that is that you're forced to use your ears with the TR-8S, which maybe is a better thing for you. I don't know. There's two schools of thought there. I could hop over to LFO and there's two LFOs to choose from here. So one, two, I haven't chose anything yet, but there's tons to choose from uh, in this menu here. So as I mentioned, pretty much everything you need here is right on the surface. It can get a little bit more menu divey, especially in comparison to the TR-8S. And now we'll take a look at the sonic quality of both these drum machines. I use these two completely differently as standalone drum machines. I don't really find myself uploading samples into the TR-8S because it doesn't have that much sampling space. Like you're not really gonna be chopping longer samples with the TR-8S. It doesn't lend itself to that sort of workflow at all. It's more of a one-shot machine. And we'll get further into this in the sampling portion of this video. With the 8S though, I pretty much use it strictly for Roland, like classic Roland drum sounds. Sounds that we all know. So the TR-808, the TR-909, they also just added the CR-78 with the latest update. And by the way, here is more about the latest update as well if you'd like to dig a bit further into that. The cool thing, and I've spoken about this so much, but I'll say it again, is that these samples, if you could call them that, they use ACB technology, which is why at least for now, I'm using those classic samples uh, exclusively with the ADES. ACB stands for Analog Circuit Behavior, which makes these sounds react differently. They sort of sound as if they're coming from an analog circuit. And so all of the parameters here, let's say this sound here, this is just an 808 kick. Let's change that to something a little punchier actually, actually like that. So changing the decay of that kick, more attack, less attack. And I'm changing the tone of it here as well, the tune of it. And so all of the classic Roland drum sounds react in that same way. So the, these clabes, these are 70 CR78 clabes. So it's almost as if you have a CR78, you have the same controls just in the TR8S and you have that for all the classic Roland drum sounds, which is pretty amazing. The DigiTac doesn't use this sort of ACB technology, but it does have a lot more control over the samples that you upload into it. There's also a lot more memory in this thing. Alternatively though, I just find myself being more creative with the DigiTac because I'm able to upload any sample that I want into it. The DigiTac lends itself really well to a sampling sort of workflow. Sonically, I could go anywhere that I want, and I just have a lot more control over the sounds that I'm putting into it, which is why, as I mentioned, I use it more as a composition tool TR-8S is a bit more of a performance tool. It's like an add-on to whatever else might be happening within that performance. And in terms of the Digitax sonic sound, there's like this myth going around that it makes everything sound darker. I've heard actually a lot of people say that they don't like the way that their samples sound through Electron Unix in general, especially the Octatrack because everyone says that it makes their samples sound kind of dull. And I've heard it a few times about the Digitac as well. I think it sounds fun. I think my samples sound great through the Digitac personally. I like that sort of dark sound either way. In fact, I'm actually kind of like the contrary to that conspiracy. I find that the 8S sounds, uh, in particular, the classic Roland drum sounds can sound a little bit thin within a mix, definitely. So obviously this is all like a subjective thing. It really depends on your approach. I guess the type of music that you're making as well. Pay close attention to how each of them sounds, but don't get too fixated on it. Back in 2018, Electron boxes were presented as superior sequencers than the TR-8S. There have been some updates to the sequencer on the TR-8S. They're sort of piggybacking on how precise you could get on a per step basis. But still, the DigiTac sequencer, no surprise here, just destroys the 8S sequencer. <laughs> I think that this is the biggest reason why I go to the DigiTac specifically for composition because of its sequencer. I just feel a lot more inspired in this sense because again, everything is just right here. This is a one bar groove, so we're pretty simple. We'll go specifically to, let's say the hi-hat. I'm gonna hold down on this hi-hat. I could change any parameter here that I want. Let's say change the tuning of this specific hi-hat. Let's play it while we do it. I'm gonna solo. Right, so we hear the tuning on that specific hi-hat. Let's change something else. We'll add the filter. Let's maybe add some tons of delay on it. Bring that filter up a bit. Right, so we could do this on any step. We could also change the sample on any of these steps as well. So let's say on this, I wanna add a completely different sample, like a, let's 
say a different hi-hat. There it is. I could copy that to let's say here, except on this one, I wanna change the filter on it. Right, so right off the bat, we're coming up with something kinda cool just by moving a few parts around. And again, everything is on the surface here. Another cool thing too, if I turn the record off, I could see all of my parts playing, right? And you do get that with the, with the 8S, but you have to be specifically on the instrument play page. As soon as you go to a different page, you lose that. So it'd be cool if you could see this all the time. I know it's, you know, it's not really possible with this sort of workflow. In terms of the amount of voices that you actually have per instrument, so it, it appears that you have more with the TR-8S, right? There's 11 voices. Here you only have eight. But as I mentioned before, you could go into the sequencer, maybe even just on track one, and create a full drum groove just on this one track. By heading over to the sample page, I'm gonna choose a slot, and then I could choose, again, any sample that I want on this particular slot. So in that sense, in reality, there's actually a lot more space on the Diggy Tact. Back to the TR-8S on a per step basis, you can change certain parameters uh, per step, but you're very limited. So let's say you could change the tune, decay, control, which is delay send, velocity, probability, so how often this step will play. And then there's a sub probability, which is like a probability of the probability. <laughs> and this is great. It's a lot clunkier though than the DigiTax workflow, which is just killer in that sense. And for these per step parameters here, you have to make sure that motion record is on. You could also record in real time. You could motion record in real time if you want. So let's say with this kick, Right, so now that kick is kind of going nuts. I recorded that in, let's do one more. Let's say on, on the hi-hats, record this in. And we have that motion recorded in as well. This approach, again, demonstrates the different usage of these two instruments. Again, this just solidifies the DigiTact in the composition world for me. If you're gonna step over to the TR-8S though, motion record is a really useful tool in a live setting. You could just very quickly record your parts in. It's very quick and easy. And if you wanna take that motion record off, boop, you just take it off like this. You could also erase it really quickly. Shift on motion record, erase all, yes. We just spoke about sample space. In terms of step space, you have a lot more to work with because you have eight variations uh, per pattern. Micro timing, which is a huge aspect of the DigiTax sequencer. Unfortunately, the TR-8S does not have any sort of micro timing. So if I hit play, there is like a nudge option, which I'm currently on. So that'll nudge like the entire pattern forward or backwards. But in terms of like individual voices, you can't nudge things specifically, whereas with the DigiTact, you can. So I'm gonna hit play. I have this little snare part playing here. I'm gonna hit record. I could zero in on this specific note and make it kind of a little bit sloppy. So this one is ahead of the beat. This one's behind the beat. There's so many different things you could do with this. I'll give you one example. So on this particular snare, so I'm just gonna double that pattern. Maybe bring the volume of this down, tune the sample down a bit. I'm gonna change the micro timing on this one to sort of fatten up that rhythm. Okay, and I'm gonna bring this one. Right, so this is just a great way to, again, really polish your parts, really zero in, and it absolutely levels up the DigiTax sequencer in comparison to the TR-8S. In terms of sequencing other instruments, the DigiTax wins again. I would say that it works better as a standalone brain in this case. You've got your eight MIDI tracks here, which you could sync up to you know, some other hardware instruments within your setup, or maybe even something software within your DAW for a hybrid approach. And if you want, you could run that through the DigiTax mixer right here, which has some really interesting effects. You've got left and right, you could pan those, and each channel has delay as well as reverb, which sound really good. The TR-8S also has a mixer mode, which honestly, I haven't explored that much. I looked into it a little bit. My understanding at this point is that the mixer is used for standalone sounds and not as a controller for external instruments. In terms of controlling other instruments, I just don't use the TR-8S for that at all. There's no keyboard. I actually can't remember even seeing anyone using the ADS to control other instruments in that way. But I myself have used it in a different way, a different as a different type of controller to control Ableton. It does that as an absolute beast.
that's the big thing about the 8S. We're gonna be getting into that later in the video. Next, my friends, is sampling. Again, the DigiTac wins in this category. As I mentioned earlier, the TR-8S is a one-shot machine. That's, that's really what it is. It's not meant to chop up samples or like alter longer samples. That's not what it is. Whereas the DigiTac handles samples short or long in a much more precise and creative way. What we haven't spoke about is the limit, like how many parameters can you change on a per step basis? I actually don't know the answer to that question. So an example of this, if you're working with something uh, a lot simpler, like a pocket operator, let's say the POKO, when you start adding too many voices or too many parameters onto a part, you start you start to lose things uh, in a very evident way. I've gone deep on this with the DigiTact in terms of like per step parameters. I have not reached a limit, uh, so I don't think it's anything to worry about. <laughs> you can go as far as you'd like. But another thing that I haven't brought up yet is that everything is downgraded to mono. All of your samples that you upload into here, they get downgraded to mono. You can still have a stereo thing happening. So let's say in this group, if I wanted to, I'm gonna go over to amp and I could pan things here. And so the master output will have this panned information in it. It will be in stereo. Another thing that's definitely weird with the DigiTact is time warping or time stretching samples. There's like a hack that I've seen kicking around uh, for doing this on YouTube. So it is possible, but I just find that the sample ends up having tons of artifacts in it. It's, it's in my opinion, it's pretty much unusable. <laughs> in terms of sampling, because of everything that I just mentioned, I just find myself using the TR-8S more as a live standalone drum machine. And again, just solidifying the DigiTac more as a groove box. You could create full on grooves with this thing. That is also a killer drum machine. Let's take a look at compatibility with other instruments and software. This category also kind of falls into MIDI control. Both of these units make for solid clocks. I haven't ended up using the TR-8S much as a clock, but the times that I have, I didn't run into any issues with it. Unfortunately, using some units as the master clock they just don't sync well, like sometimes the sync is ahead or behind, but the TR-8S syncs just as you would expect it to. And for those who don't know, pretty much all Electron gear is known for having the most solid clock in the game. Looking into compatibility with software, these actually both have their own native software. So the DigiTact has Overdrive and there's a TR editing software as well for the TR-8S. Could also be used with the TR-6S. For me personally, I prefer to just really get to know the workflow of both of these and keep it standard alone. I find that it's more creative, keeps you off the screen. Both units also have audio over USB, so you could bounce individual tracks directly into your DAW live. As I mentioned earlier, if you have a bigger hardware setup, you could also control eight instruments via MIDI with the DigiTact. So let's say with MIDI A, I could just go in and start plugging in parts that will play on whatever instrument you're controlling. In this case, you don't even necessarily have to use the DigiTact standalone. You could just use it as a controller for other instruments if you wanted to, and maybe just use the mixer as well. And so I think that in this category, both of these win in different ways. <laughs> and speaking of winning, I think that so far, the DigiTact has won in the most categories, but then comes for me, the most important topic, how I've ended up using either of these instruments. And this is the category that the TR-8S wins by a landslide. Before getting into this though, let's talk about today's sponsor, DistroKid. If you're someone who's independent like myself and you're looking for a way to distribute your music to all major streaming platforms, DistroKid is just the way to go. Let's get into reasons why I think they're number one. In terms of what's new, they recently released a smartphone app, which makes checking your important DistroKid stats easy and accessible. The app is now available on Android through the Play Store. Essentially everything that you've been able to do on the DistroKid desktop app, you're now able to do through your smartphone. In fact, here's a list of key features that the app offers you. You might wanna pause it now if you wanna check them out. In today's day and age, we all know how many hats we have to wear as artists and producers. It can just be a lot, so write the music, produce the music. Then you've gotta create content to promote it a few weeks before it's released. Then you've gotta continue creating content after it's been released to promote it. It's a lot, and I'm not saying that DistroKid does all of this work for you, but they do make it a lot easier for us with the free promotional tools that they offer. The one I use most is Hyperfollow. It's essentially a free landing page or a link tree. It's super clean. You could link maybe your latest video, your latest single, other important links you'd like to lead people to. I also use promo cards whenever I release a single. Just select the single that you would like to promote and it'll auto-generate a few different uh, options for you to choose from. Go with DistroKid. It's just over $20 a year to release unlimited music to all major streaming platforms. You keep 100% of your streaming royalties. So many other tools that they offer for someone who's independent, 
they're, they're made for us. And there is a discount linked in the description of this video if you would like to join. Anyways, back to the video. Let's get into how I've ended up implementing the DigiTact and the TR8S into my own setup. The TR8S, in my opinion, is light years ahead of the DigiTact in terms of being a hybrid machine for live performance. Let me expand. I have my Ableton set up here. So these first five faders are controlling the volume of five voices in Ableton. You just don't have and simply will never have this sort of surface control with the DigiTact. All of these voices here open for standalone drums on the TR8S. So I'll play this for you here. This is just the Ableton drums right here. I also have effects routed to these knobs here. So this one's called Fade to Gray. That's an effects in Ableton. This is Delay, also in Ableton. And this is Reverb. So over top of that, I could throw some drums in here as well. I use these last two voices here as like fill options. So that's like a CR78 fill. I also have my master effects up here. So this is just for the standalone drums on the TR8S, let's say. Low pass. Not to mention that I'm also using the TR8S as an audio interface for Ableton. So it's like a hybrid dual function here. In terms of audio outputs with the TR8S, I could choose where I want to route in Ableton and I could output those to, let's say, another mixer. I have the model 1.4. And so that's something I've been experimenting with using this as the audio interface, routing out to the model 1.4 to have further mixer control. Compactness is great too if you're traveling to a gig. It just helps to not have to carry an extra audio interface if you're routing to something like the model 1.4, which is an analog mixer. And so the TR8S has got you there as well. Yes, the DigiTech can also be used as an audio interface, but it doesn't have eight outs. You can still use it live, but then it just becomes like a really limited mixer. Diving further into the performability of the TR8S, let's actually erase all of these parts. So clear, I'm gonna clear all of these tracks. Notice how quick that was, by the way. So now these are all empty. And this is something we haven't touched actually. This is like the perform button, I guess you'd call it. We'll go to rim shot. One, two, three, four. And so there's our rim. Maybe add some reverb to that a little bit quick. Or so, sorry, some delay. What's on this voice? I have hi-hats. Those have been tapped in. I wanna put that fill back in. I'm gonna bring that down so I could just still use it as a fill. These hi-hats, same thing. Right, so I'm just really quickly entering in my parts. You cannot do this with the, with the DigiTact. And because you have that ACB, this is acting as if it's a OG 606, right? I have so much control over the opening or closing of that hi-hat. I could tune it real quick. So just the way that the TR8S is built, it clearly encourages like a quick flow of ideas, quick and spontaneous. It's also really quick to switch out parts. So let's say here I had these, these 808 hi-hats, right? So let's say this was muted. I could just change this to a different hi-hat. Let's say uh, CR78. Add some metallic to that. And again, I can't stress this enough. The coolest part about this is that I'm doing this all at the same time, just to, to reiterate. It's an audio interface. I'm using it for one, two, three, four, five, six standalone drums that I could tap in and bring out during the performance. It's also a perfect, simple controller that gives you what you need in Ableton. And it's got eight audio outs all at the same time. So again, this is where the TR8S destroys and it just brings it up to that level, in my opinion, of the DigiTact. But for different reasons. The argument, I guess, would be that the DigiTact is a lot more precise, but you don't need that sort of precision if you're doing like a live spontaneous performance type of thing. But yeah, I think that is all. Hopefully this pointed you in the right direction. Leave a comment if you have any questions or you just want to comment on something. Like and subscribe, you know the deal. There are also affiliate links in the description of this video. If you'd like to purchase any of the gear, it helps me a lot if you use those links, so please do. Thanks for being here guys and I hope to see you soon.